<laughs> oh man. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, it's always funny because we start this show talking about what this show is meant for. Be like, yo, let's just hit record and let them see. Me. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of K Fave. I am Will Farrell, and of course, I am with gonna do what's happening, everybody. Yes, indeed. And you already know this is the Thanks. wrestling podcast for us by us, where we're keeping it real. We're talking to wrestling and we're yeah, we're giving we're giving our opinions, the unbiased yeah. opinions. Now, like as we always say when we're talking about this stuff, it's all love. There's no hatred here. There's nobody with it. We don't we don't None. Bash, we don't shame. This is purely None. about the fact that we are big fans of wrestling. Anybody that steps in that ring, you have already re- have a huge amount of respect from us. And so for those that we see that's busting their, busting their behinds each and every single day, making themselves better, we, when you see it not going so well from maybe a creative side or from somewhere else, it's just like, yo, let, let's try to air it out since this is the reality era. Yeah. And- Are we still in the reality era? I'm going to say, say what you're going to say first, but then, and then, but that was my question now. No problem. I was going to say, to quote Phil Brooks, our problem is we care too much. That's our that's our problem, honestly. And I mean, I've been a fan since 98. I mean, I care. You know, I, I, this is, I mean, this this is my life. How, this is my home. This is how I feel. What was the question you, you, you were asking before? I'm sorry. Are we, are they, now, you know, like they've always had, like, again, we came in during the Attitude Era. We yeah. saw when it was the Ruthless yeah. Aggression Era. Yeah. Then we ask, saw, is it still the reality era, right? Yeah, because I remember the PG era, then it was like the reality era. But I remember them saying it was a, another era where they were like, you make the choice. Was it the people's era or something like that? Well, it wasn't people power. People, no, 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 no. This was way before that. This is no, this is after that. This was around the time when they did the women's evolution of uh, paper. Okay. Game. And they were mm-hmm. trying to say, like, because remember, like when Vince. Stephanie and Triple H came out and they were just like, I remember the episode. Yeah, we've heard y'all. We're listening to y'all. And it's just like, I can't remember what they called that. If, if that's the what? era we're in or not. There was. Yeah, they did do that. They came out there. They blamed everything on Baron Corbin's character, firstly. First, <laughs> yes, first and foremost. Terrible. Duh. Shame on you, WWE. How y'all doing, man? Like that. Like that, man. Like it. But no, that's the truth, though. What was that called? People in the comment sections, if you know what we're talking about, please let us know in the comments below. Yeah. You know, I love reading. I love reading the comments of every episode, man. It's, oh yeah, it's really it's the good. best. Oh yeah, it's always great. It's, I, I love seeing it when they're like, "Yo, this is the wrestling show I needed to see." Yes, thank you so much. So we are we are glad that y'all enjoyed that. So yeah, uh, but let us know. I, I'm going with people era. Uh, but, I think with the people people era. Yeah, but let us know what it is. But we we also got a great fun-filled episode today um a lot has happened as always uh yes we got nxt we're talking about we're going to be talking about raw of course we got some fantasy booking coming up of course we're going to be talking mm-hmm. about smackdown as well and of course hell in the cell is coming yep. and we are going to be doing some fantasy yes. booking for hell in the cell so you want to stay tuned you're going to want to watch this whole thing so you can know what we are coming with for hell in the cell, but the first full, thing we're going to full episode, full episode. So the first thing we're getting into NXT takeover in your house. The pay per view was this past Sunday. We had, I believe, five matches. Mm-hmm. Uh, champions battle. New champion was crowned, and yep. we have got to get into it, man. Uh, a yep. lot, a lot of good matches. I will say, general as just booking wise. Fantastic book. Your thoughts I agree. on the book. Thoughts on the book. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to say it was uh, NXT never disappoints me. Like they have never, from takeovers to in your house to war games to Great American Bash to every, they have never ever disappointed me. And this night was no different. I will say, um, me personally, um, I enjoy all the matches. A match I really wish that. And I said, and we said this off air. I really wish they would have crowned a new NXT champion. And it's because, and it's, and, 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 I, and I don't mean anything against the person himself. I, I, I'm, I, I'm just not into like carrying cross. Like it's just like it's not. I don't. It, it, it doesn't connect <laughs> with me as a like someone watching. Yeah. I don't want to see him as champion. Like I'm not saying he can't be like a top guy there, or whatever. But I just don't. It just doesn't fit him. Like yeah. I just. 
we gonna we gonna get in the we we gonna get in the carry. I want because we 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 talked about it offline, like you said, and yeah. I want to really get into that because that is one of our things that we have on the bill today. Uh, but I want to start though at the beginning of a uh, takeover in your house and just with the rest of the cards that they had. So of course the women's title was on the line. Um, the million dollar championship, million dollar man belt is back. Look, uh, I am not. I am not gonna lie. I was quite, quite thrilled about that, seeing seeing that belt back. Because the way they just did it was so dope to me. I was yes. like, look, look. Yes. And I know I know historically they said that that belt hasn't gotten people over, but I don't know about this time, man. I feel like NXT will make it feel like a big deal. And, like they and made that's the and I feel like that's the biggest contradiction because that belt gave us probably one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Steve Austin. So how does that belt <laughs> like uh, I like that's kind of a contradiction, you know? Yeah. Contradiction. Uh, yeah. But uh but we uh yeah, a lot a lot of a lot of good matches were at, at in your house. I think the first one that yep. they had too was uh, uh Bronson Reed with uh, I believe MSK versus uh, uh Legado de, de Del Fantasma. I call I call him El Chapo. That's that's just <laughs> Legado del Fantasma. Um, great, <laughs> yeah. What you said, uh, El Chapo and them were were amazing. Uh, they were great as always, and, and you know what? I love them as a trio. I do enjoy them as a trio. Like you don't always have great factions and stuff like that. They have a great dynamic. I love their leader. Again, I don't want to disrespect their names because uh, I'm still learning. Uh, but I love their leader as the cruiserweight champion, especially him holding it down as when they split it and stuff like that, becoming the actual cruiserweight champion and stuff like that. And just like uh, really, you know, being able to hand over the belt to, uh, I, I always say his name wrong too. What's his name? Uh, the current uh, the current cruiserweight champion from the Time Splitters? Oh, man. Uh, oh, my God. I forgot what his he's name calling himself. Right now. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I always forget what he's calling himself now. But uh, Because he uh, because he he unmasked and he's some... Yeah. And then uh, 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 the other one that does the time the, uh, from the time school, the one that does the McFly yeah. night. Yeah, I'm gonna Google it. Hold on, man. Yeah, I want to get his name wrong. It says Kushida. I think it is it. I think it is Kushida. It's yeah, 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 yeah. I think it is Kushida. The current champion is Kushida, really? Yeah, that's what he beat. He, he beat him for. Now he's about to have a U.S. Open challenge um, uh, during oh, NXT. Okay, okay, okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We apologize, guys, for the delay, but like we do want to make sure we get all the facts right as we were, as we talk to this about you guys. We don't want to get on here and say, and say wrong things. Yeah, no, no. Like I said, we we have a deep respect for a lot of these people, so we want to make sure that we you know uh, announce stuff right. We have things correct, and even if we don't know, that's why I'll go like, "Hey, El Chapo." I'm not finna sit yeah. here and butcher them people's name. But uh, exactly. they did have a uh, a winner's take all match with Bronson yes. Reed, who is the current uh, NXT North American champion, and the NXT tag team uh, MSK. Yeah. And hey, did not disappoint. Did not no, at all. disappoint. Love at the all. Uh, sequence at between all. Hey, hey, well, side note question. When they go back to like live shows, and nah, I because I know NXT is is gonna stay the way it is. Yeah. Do you think the reaction that MSK got, they were booed at that live event, weren't they? If I'm they not were. mistaken. They were. They were. Do you think that that's gonna like have an effect on them going forward though? Because the thing, because like in that little snippet of the live show, the real live crowd, they got booed. Yeah. So the booking of it. More or less, you could argue isn't effective as booking them as baby faces, though. And you could argue that I'm not saying you know I like them, but I'm I like saying, them. Uh, the cr- the crowd was I loved listening. I was like, bro, what's going on? Like I, I was like, I could at first I was like, I was like, did they pipe in the wrong sounds real quick? But I was like, that's the live crowd. No, that's the live crowd. Yeah, it's a, it, but again too, it's like you're also dealing with another set of facts a faction that people also enjoy. They enjoy them being heels. So it's like they also yeah. too want to see them go over. It's like yo, I would love you. You always love to see a, a set of folks that have turned he- that that know how to really work their heel aspect. When you want yeah. to see that heel win the belt, when you're like, I yeah. want to see you steal this off of him. Like I want to see yeah. you like the person, like the person. Like, 
And it's like, yes, because ain't nothing better when they're at the ramp and they're like this and they're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm bro, like, that's like, yo, like if you, when you pull <laughs> that off, it's like, yo, you're in your bag and heel. Like that's and like you do that and you have the end graphic right there. That's how you get over a heel, guys. Yeah, it's so simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but match wise though, the match was great. Like I, I again too, I I definitely saw a lot of uh, like Bronson Reed and the rest of them like their their uh their years of wrestling coming out like great sequences between all of them, especially in a triple threat match. Uh, even the ending and stuff was great. You know, of course, Bronson Reed and MSK rem uh, remain champs and stuff like that to, to definitely push them over. But uh, I hope this doesn't limit, you know, the El Chapo's stride and stuff, especially now, though, too, because of the fact of going from cruiserweight now to those things. It's like, yo, y'all are showing us that you are taking him and his faction seriously and bumping them up from the cruiserweight aspect now into being contenders for the men's single titles and the tag team titles. So I just hope they don't kill their thunder like y'all did the Hurt Business. Um, I whole, I wholeheartedly, first of all, Hurt Business still hurts my heart, all right? That was the best faction in wrestling, all right? Better than the Inner Circle, better than Pinnacle, better than The Way, better than everything you guys have on the roster. Better than all that. But anyway, like you said, it's good to see them moved up, though, because you said he was in the Cruiserweight uh, Division 4. You see him moved up to NXT uh, North America, and it does. And it, it makes me happy to see that they take these bumps in the division or moves in the division seriously like yeah. they you know I, and i like that because it goes to show that like it makes each title feel important mm -hmm. like it's different like yo in the shows it's different animals in each division like Kushida is not the same as bronson reed like and you have to tackle each of those titles in a different approach like i felt like he even switched his style a little bit a bit more of a brawler style i felt i saw like more of like the heavyweight striker style i mean yeah. a heavyweight grappler style in terms of like the cruiserweight striker style and I, I like seeing that and I mean and just but I really felt the the right person won because Bronson Reed just won the belt off Gargano and he he had he went through a lot to win it so it made me happy to see him continue to retain and honestly I can't wait to see him to see him move up in the ranks as well to contend for oh, yeah. the NXT championship because you see it all at that mark one though so oh yeah to see him have have great matches in terms of in the MSK as well, I mean, they all just did a phenomenal job. But like, honestly, like that was a great match. Great. Oh, yeah, match. yeah, 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 yeah. So shout out definitely, like you said, shout out to um, Bronson Reed, MSK, and of course, uh, like you said, uh, La Gallo de uh, Fantasma. I have, their, <laughs> I have their stuff up now, yeah. so now I can read it. That's uh, right. <laughs> that, be, that be the funny shit right there. People be like, uh, my homegirl always make fun of me. She's like, you actually have a very bilingual tongue, so I don't know how you be messing these things up. I was like, I got to read it first. <laughs> Like y'all be like, oh, it's name this. I like, I didn't hear that. I'm high. You know, I didn't hear that. And now I'm finna say it. Del Fantasma. Yes, Legado del Fantasma. Um, but yeah, and so, uh, it, but also from one great match to another one, and this one was was more of a uh, revenge type of match. Zaya Lee versus Mercedes Martinez. Uh, <clears throat> great match. Woo! I'm Woo! bro. I'm loving Zaya's yeah. character. I'm Me. loving the aspect. Me too. I wish. I only wish that like Mia Yim was like in was it was in this mix as well because she'd have she'd have done great with this. But instead, you guys have her on SmackDown Purgatory for some reason. I don't know why. Well, no, but... no I think uh, I, honestly, I think too like she may be enjoying like getting uh, they stuff ready for like they wedding and stuff. I think too like like we said we oh, didn't have a that, stuff like that is yeah that is correct. That and is then true. too like, but... like with Keith Lee's issues and stuff like that. So I I, I, I see reasoning of her being there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But char but character wise, I'd love to see her in the mix with something like this, though. But yeah. regardless of this is an amazing match. I felt the right person won. Oh, yes. Mo most definitely. Yeah. Um, right uh, won. Yeah. Zali definitely uh, went over on it. But it was a great match, too. Nothing to really take uh, Mercedes stride away from her uh, builds to what yeah. they're getting builds to what they're trying to do with Zali. Uh, but again, like I said, didn't take nothing away from Mercedes. Uh, this is, you know, still came over, uh, even though she did not win, still kind of came over on Zai Lee at the end, you know, uh, when they came to the <laughs> Shout out. Uh, uh, I thought I did a real quick contrast, like, great. No. Oh yeah, man, yes. Anytime you're anytime you in a Hispanic-like convenience store and you see those, it's like, <laughs> you get this real quick, no one's gonna, no one's gonna know. How would they know? They'll never know. <laughs> They'll never know. <laughs> How would they know? <laughs> 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 
no, but, no, uh, no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. And, <laughs> but so, uh, uh, Mercedes, uh, Zion Lee attacks uh, Mercedes after the match with a chair, and then she, of course Mercedes gets sweet, uh, sweet revenge. But um, the the architect of all of this got into it. At the end, you know, Mercedes mm-hmm. approaches their, uh, you know, their shrine and stuff like that. Who's really the puppet master of all of this, uh, 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 uh Mei Ying, and mm-hmm. so Mercedes tries to come and it lets us know Mei Ying is nothing to play with. No jokes. Literally grabs her by the chin and launches her off of the ramp. Loving it. Loving the power yes. dynamic. Loving the yes. yes. Give me these mythical yes. characters where it's like, yo. <gasps> And I love Mercedes acting it out, especially coming from a UFC background, understanding yep. like, hey, you know, how to adapt to these things, really taking it on the chin and being able to sell it, man. So that's why I, I do, I hope, uh, uh, I would love for them to push Mercedes Martinez as a Shayna Baszler type, but do not have her slope down like they did with her. I think Mercedes is a, a, a phenomenal wrestler. I think she continues to get better and better in the ring with all of her talent. So even working on the stuff with her as far as being able to do mic work and stuff like that, see a future champion in her also Zia Lee. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Man, when, I seen them, when I seen the braids, I was like, yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. When you hey, put girl. that sword down, let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> man, but it's good to see Zia Lee too. Like, I've always enjoyed her style in the ring too. So it's good to see like her getting that new kind of character push and it working and stuff like that. Instead of being put into that abyss of like having great matches, um, and then not being able to go over. And you always look at it like, nah, she should have won that. Like, why are y'all making her the jobber of this? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, she and she gave a great match. So I'm glad to see though. That's that those two ladies getting a feature in a pay-per-view and, you know, Zali winning her first uh, takeover um, match as well. It was really, really great to see. I felt the women didn't disappoint at all. The women at all. And uh, the other women's match on, on the card was, I believe, uh, Raquel Gonzalez defended against Ember Moon. Yes, um, she did. I, I'm, I'm going to say, listen, because I'm biased, because I'm a big Ember Moon fan. I wanted Ember to win this match. I did, too. I did, too. I did. <laughs> but... Win. You know I gotta give it where it's due. Raquel proved why that belt on her. Yeah, she did. Raquel, I, I, yeah, I completely understand why it's on Raquel. She is, she is their top for real. Like that's who they should put their money behind with this. Yes, but I, I, I but, but I felt if Ember would have won it and they gave her a run, I wouldn't have hated that either because I felt like there's so much more Ember can give to NXT especially as a champion it's coming it's coming though that's that that's my thing about it though it is coming because the more of these people that i'm looking at as far as we get to like you know we're always we're always looking at like who's there what's going on and if we be honest there's there's not a lot of women in the title contingency picture currently to of as to where it makes sense now who the next person might be we're not really sure, but I don't think it's going to be one person. I think it's two. It's going to, they're going to try to go the carry across route, which we'll get into, and it's going to keep trying to test Raquel's skill. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. triple threat match, you know, fatal four way. Um, I would love, we're going to get into that. Would love to see her defend that in Hell in the Cell. Yep. But we're going to get that in fantasy booking. So you just, you, you, fantasy better, booking. You better yes. stay tuned. But yeah, man, I, um, very great match between the two of them. Like you said, we're both biased. We want Amber Moon to definitely yeah. hold that championship up for Texas. Uh, but I did. Yeah, I, I sure, I sure did. I sure did. Yes. Listen, I sure did. <laughs> I wanted it. I wanted it so bad, man. But but again, she didn't go out bad. So again, too, it's like it didn't no. take away from her her steed or anything yeah. like that. And again, too, yeah. um. Uh, if you watch the show too, there were some controversies going on between her and Raquel after uh, behind the ring. So like all of them were like her, uh, Shotzi, um, uh, Dakota, and all of them were all like kind of like going at it and stuff in the back after the match and stuff like that. So clearly this feud is not over. Um, oh, not at still, all. Like, yeah, they're still in the mix of going at it with one another. So we shall definitely see what shall happen between them. Uh, but uh, speaking of all uh, championships moving forward in the in your house, a new championship 
new champion has a rise after takeover in your house. We were already in the nostalgia feel, and so they brought even more nostalgia back. And as mm-hmm. you've said before, and I'm gonna let you speak on it, this might definitely bring a lot of contingency <laughs> to a lot of people in NXT. The million dollar championship is back, ladies and gentlemen. Wonder, 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 the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, has brought back the million dollar championship and we crowned a million dollar champion last night. And his name is Eli Knight. <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry, uh, LA Knight. See my, my, my fault. LA Bam. Knight. My bad. <laughs> mm, sorry about that. Uh, hmm, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have one for me to to, to snack on and you know uh, deviate. But yeah, L.A. Knight versus Cameron. Let me say Grimes. something. Man. I'm gonna see some of these, man. These are amazing. You're gonna love these, bro. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you some to Cali, bro. I right yes. hear. I know, cause I know, man. Hey, you gotta get them from Texas, man. The guy, man, ain't Texas. I'm gonna send you some. Out to my homie out there in the West Coast, man. I'm gonna send you some, bro. For real. Yes, please, please. Yeah. And I will be just I- like this on Kayfabe, just. <laughs> that will be the thing. Just yeah, that's our bite. Uh, um, I'm so real. Like, I was so happy to see this match. Honestly, like I would have loved to see Cameron Grimes win that that belt because because his character. I mean, like I feel his character has has grown so much, and like he's gotten yes. himself genuinely over. Like I feel he's somebody they can really like. Really, he's a, a he's a he's a top player on the show. Yeah, honestly, he. I remember him just being just like there. Remember? Oh yeah. Cameron no, no. Grimes, baby. It, it, yeah, it was just one of those like, who are you? And then it's like too, but also too to see things like, why are you talking to Finn Balor? That's the prince. Like, who is this guy? But then you see him in the ring, and you like, oh okay, oh oh oh, oh go. you got that in your belt, and then. Yeah. Just even the way he plays it too, it's like, yo, I'm not a, I'm not, again, even to the thing of a Finn, it's not a straight edge straight to it. It is one of those like, yo, you are kind of pulling this out your ass, but to the point of where you're making, like you can tell like Cameron Grimes, it has a great IQ because he's thinking on his feet and you can yeah. see that with him. And I like that he's developed into that character and then adding the money aspect. So I'm just, I'm hoping from, from a creative standpoint, what they're doing is um, they're, I, I, I would hope that, you know, uh, for those of them know, there was a ladder match to determine the new million dollar uh, champion. And of course, like we said, it was LA Knight. So I'm not sure if uh, Ted DiBiase uh, is going to become LA Knight's manager along with him with this championship, or if it's just the championship now, or what? Like if they're going to do some segment of like I trying mean, to tra- train him to become like, you know, that, everything that embodies. That would be so dope, though, honestly. Like if that was something that like came with it, like the manager starts with Ted DiBiase, like that's some, like, I mean, and I, 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 I said before, we talked about it off air, like I was so excited to see this because all the people, there are people who said that the million dollar championship doesn't get people over. And I mean, for me, I feel that if there was ever a program that would utilize it, for what it could really do and maximize its potential, it's NXT. Because yeah. NXT is going to treat it the way it should be treated. It's not going to be an afterthought. It's not going to be treated like a joke. Like, that was a legit ladder match that we saw. Like, yeah. the boys is really going hard for that belt. Yeah. And I feel like if they're making, like, they're introducing this belt is a great idea. Like, imagine the promos LA Knight can cut as million dollar champion, yep. heel or face, regardless. Yep. Like, you can, like, this belt. Can honestly imagine like they can even run run, run the storyline too though like that belt in particular it changes you it makes yes. you more arrogant more self centered more that and whoever holds and you can literally do that you can have a baby face a good guy like a well before like a good guy like a Chad Gable winning and slowly watch the descent he gets with the title like that kind of character work and like it almost like it turn it makes you go mad almost yeah. with with yeah. the success or whatever and I feel like it's if there was ever a brand that could really go in depth with that and like really sink its teeth in and give us some good storytelling with that belt is NXT. Yeah, you're right. That's our best shot at it anyway. Yeah, you're right. But no, but also too, I think that 
is strengthening the point of what you said into who was who you know like who came out the victor because if that is what they're doing it's great that la night won first because as you said as that story develops we see like this is a guy that's already like that he's already doing that but then two it's like let's say for instance he's not keeping up to them standards you know like it starts being yeah. hard for him to really want to carry that do this and then you start seeing him like pushing refs out the way and stuff like that like he's not yeah. being that million dollar champion but here you have like Cameron Grimes, who's still fighting for it, and then eventually goes over and he gets the belt. But then now you got Ted DiBiase showing him how to really clean up being a millionaire. And then he could be doing that the entire time while the storyline is going. But like, you know why he's a million dollar champion? Because this is how he carries himself. This is how L.A. Knight, when he walks down a ramp, this is how he comes down a ramp. Like he is a million dollar champion. LA Knight yeah. dresses like a million dollar champion. And so there's yep. no price for the million dollar champion. <laughs> but then uh -huh. in comes Cameron Grimes in one of the promos, decked out in a suit. The hair is cut. The cleanness of him. He was like, yo, I heard what you said. And that's why that championship is going to be mine. I got this money and now I know what to do with it. I'm going to still be me. Oh, I'm still Cameron Grimes, baby. Love it. But I now know how to play this game. And so now it's Whoa. like, and if you if you really want, and if you, and if you really want to throw it in there, also, oh, oh, some legendary shit, ring the bell. Here comes JBL as his manager. Takeover match for the billion dollar championship with the two of them in their corners. The million dollar match, bro. Oh my god, da -da -da. come da -da -da. on! Hold on, <laughs> but come out. Bro, tell me that would not hit, bro. Would hit. Listen, and we this, this, WWE. This, 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 listen, we here. Oh, we here. We're here. Like in no break in terms of break. Why well, we here? But yes, man. So I'm I'm hoping that is like just some of the things that they may shape with this million dollar championship. Because like you said, for the folks who aren't in them title pictures for the North American or the NXT Heavyweight Championship, this is this is a championship that I think will really help. NXT's character development for a lot of these people that's there because this isn't necessarily like the championship championship. So it's like, yo, you have to make this into something. So it's just yeah, like how, to. yeah. So it's just like the same way of like how Miz had to basically bring the Intercontinental Championship back to glory. It's the same thing with this million dollar championship. It is what you make of it based off of the character that you are. Yeah, I agree. And I feel and and, and and on that platform with NXT now being a weekly like two hours on the main network now. Yeah. Like I feel having that extra belt for any other brand, I'd be like, you don't need another title. But for NXT, because I know the character story, the storytelling that they'll that they could do with it, I'm happy they have it because yes. that way it gives more people more things to do. Exactly. Like there's more stuff in like and I and I and I love the way they have everything flowing. And I feel adding that belt. It's just only gonna make it better. And yes. that's how people the bell looks great, guys. It looks it does. I, at hey, first I was skeptical, it looks but you good. You know what it was? It's old TV that made the belt look bad. I was like, yeah, I don't like this belt. But then when he brought it out, now it's like you, you, and you see it really shine, really kind of hard. Now then too, though, also if you wanted to really be on some stuff, somebody that really like got in there, you know, I always like to use me as an example. If I was there, I'd rock that and be like, yo, man, millions are different now. Bro, come out there with a blue-faced million-dollar championship redesigned for current oh. times. Yes, imagine. And, and then, bro, if there's ever time to do it, you can do it and yeah. bring it back. Like, and then, but you, saying, I, I'd be an asshole though. I'd be like, I'd throw that away. Be like, yo, <laughs> millions. Pff, that's for peasants. Behold, the trillion-dollar championship. Yes. <laughs> well, only the trill survive. Listen, and man, listen, but that, you know, that's my story. You know, let, let, let's that not. Boy, yeah. That could be dope, man. That That'd boy, be dope. That boy, 
and that, and that boy demand Vince McMahon himself presented to me. I demanded, yep. bro. I demanded be presented by Vinnie Mac. Bro, that's what, look, it looked like a new champion crown. And I ain't gonna lie, I really wish, again, that we would have another new champion crown. Yes, so we can go ahead and get into that one. So main event, that is the last really match wish. of NXT in yeah. your house, which was uh, kind of going to lead us into our next thing too as well. It was a fatal five-way match. Fatal five-way, For Fatal five-way. Fatal five-way. Not two, not three, not four, not it. That was the number. Five for the That's NXT the championship. Um, it was Goliath. How, how, how do you say it? For the next championship, NXT, NXT, NXT championship. For the next championship, NXT championship. <laughs> we, we can't continue. My, I apologize. My, I, I apologize. Look, I can't say <laughs> Imagine you read that shit on the card. Uh, for, say it again. My dad legit called it that. I'm watching wrestling at the office, right? He's like, what the hell are you watching? What is next? What's his next? NXT. He called it next. I was like, but oh. you think that? That's I swear. The first time I saw it, that's what I thought it was. I was like, what's <laughs> WWE next? I was like, this is an access what? show? What is this? I was like, oh. oh. I was like, ah, oh, could it be that? Do you remember that MTV show called Next? Yes. They used to like that day. Listen, listen. Uh, I would have gotten got a fire. I come off that bus. Mm -mm. Next. Oh, no. You ain't going to me like that. That's nah, TV, bro. Man. Nah, like, player. You're going you gonna to let me do my shit before I go. Fuck that. <laughs> You're gonna let me get my shit off. That's facts. That's what you're not gonna do. You gonna yes. let me get it off. But yes, man, fatal five way for the NXT championship. It was the champion carrying cross versus four of, of, of uh, uh, and uh, uh, undisputed being ironically of uh, the best four wrestlers to come out of NXT who are currently running NXT. Adam Cole, Pete Dunn. Kyle O'Reilly and of course Johnny Takeover, Johnny Gargano himself, all fighting for this title. It was Goliath versus Davids, and um, unfortunately, David's slingshots were not hitting. Yep. And Karrion <laughs> Cross walked out as champion again. Um, I just want to first uh, point out the highlight of that match: Scarlet's red contacts. <laughs> that was the takeaway of this match. That's what took over. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Took over at takeover. Yes, so, uh, I will say uh, again, I really would honestly, if if Kyle O'Reilly or Pete Dunn would have walked out of this match as the new champion, I wouldn't have hated it. Honestly, Especially I would have hated it. Yeah, I really, really. Like it is no, it's no knock to him as a performer wrestler, but it's just as a character. I just don't see the NXT Championship fitting on him. I just don't see it. Yeah. Like I'm, I. It's like I mean, and he, 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 he's been in great matches. This was, this was a great match. It was a yeah. great match, but it's just like, this is the kind of match I was really hoping for an upset new champion. And it's just like I, I, I just don't. I, it doesn't. It's a no for me. Like Randy Jackson, it's a no for me, dog. Like I can't. It's a, it's, it's a no for you. But I know why it's gonna be a yes after I saw this match. After I saw it, I knew exactly what this is, and this leads us to our next uh, topic, also as well. Carrion okay. Cross, the new Brock Lesnar. Now, I watched it. If you watch NXT in your house, there's a lot of suplexes going on. A lot of suplexes, a lot of big man moves happening. But what I saw was the same exact stuff I've been seeing that they do with Brock. So as you said, this was a great match. But unfortunately, that great match had nothing to do with him. This great nope. match had to do with the other four who went at it for that belt. They took mm -hmm. you out, and then you came for the pickings with the whole... I can't hear you, sleeper hold. Yeah, That's a match so good. Yeah, a match so good. I forgot he was there. All right, he's the champion. Bro, I forgot he was there. I forgot the champion was there. You're so right, Cheddar Dude. The man had three spots in that entire match, getting pushed through the door. The time he started suplexing everybody, and then the time that they splattered him on the table. That was it. Everything else 
was a phenomenal match by the four people who have been carrying that division and that brand since they've came in there. And that showed you how much of you do not know how to move into this next phase. I get it. Now who's going to stop the monster? There's a, there's this big guy, there's the big dude and all of these small guys we've been pushing, promoting to win these titles and stuff like that. Like we know Adam Cole is this small in person. Understandable. But why build all of these people up then introduce a carrying cross that to to do what? To splatter all five of your first competition alone and then two to not only that, you you make him go over the only person who's now rising in single competition, which is Kyle O'Reilly, who is out of all of them the best in a martial artist background, and you make him lose to being choked out, so that Carrion can go over. I didn't even to be honest with you. I didn't believe in Kyle O'Reilly as a singles champion. I was like, oh my god, but dude, like keep these people as a tag. What are you doing? But when he performed against Finn, I was like, yo, you got me to shut the fuck up. Yep, because <clears throat> I did not want him. I did, I did not want him and, and Bobby Fish to break up. I was like, well, "I'm break him up," but I'm looking like, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's a Montez Ford, to be honest. Yes, that's, like, that's what you are. You and this dude's a, amazing single. That's why I was like, I want for that one. I wanted Kyle O'Reilly or Pete Dunne to get over. That's who I, I wanted Pete, for this. Bro. Oh, man, because so he's been one. He's been after it for so long already. No, it's the only one you don't have. You know, but you know what? The, but the problem about it is they don't want to give him another run like he did with the NXT UK title too quick. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, you will champ agree, too that's like two years, <laughs> right? And you know what? Also, too, make me fear what's gonna happen to Walter when he got get that built up. Because you've been almost champ as much as Bruno San Martino. So how they gonna what's treat what? you after? Yeah, was it with three years now? Dang. Has it been three years? I'm sorry. That just made now more sense. Karen is gonna fight the ring general. That's who's gonna take that belt off of him. Wow. You think Walter? Walter, Walter? is gonna take that belt off of Karen Cross. If they don't move Walter up, and I don't see them for any reason moving him up, because what it looks like is they're moving people from if you're in UK, you come to NXT. Because that's what they did with Tony Storms. That's what they did with the Grizzly Young Veterans and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, and Imperium is already here and competing. So it makes sense if Walter is no longer a UK champion. It's like, what are you about to go back for? To be what, two time? Ain't nobody mm-hmm. finna take your reign. Nobody's yeah, gonna be champion for lie. three years. Yeah, and I think too, because I, I, I know before too, they said that Walter didn't want to live in America, but you know, it could have changed. You never know. And yeah, and necessarily though, Walter ain't got to live here. Yeah. It ain't that much of a, of a trip for him to go from the pond over to uh, uh, Tampa and then head back. Yeah. Like, but he worried, it, he it, yeah. That's the only person I see as how y'all are building this come and take this off of carrying across is Walter. Yeah, there's nobody else. They don't have anybody else on that roster that they've built up enough yet. Like, Bronson Reed still needs a good two more real, really good in depth views before I can see him like moving up to that to, to, to heavyweight. He needs two more years. And he I, needs about two more years yeah. before he can do that. Good, and, like good, yeah. But also too, good, it would yeah. it, it would keep that if the side if it is still this thing of them wanting to move carrying up quicker, like how they try to do Keith Lee and stuff like that, it would make sense for them to take it off of him to Walter because we've already seen Walter prove that he can go against smaller dudes. Like when he faced Tyler yeah. Bates, still right now, I think one of the best matches in the last five years. That was, now you you want to talk David and Goliath? That was that right there. Yeah. And that was, so, that, yeah. that was a, that, yes. That so was, was a slobber knocker. Bruh, JR, man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Slobber knockers, boy. Man, I missed I miss, I miss but, JR, man. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. We are going to get into that too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah so uh yeah, I, I I think they are trying to shape him up like the next Brock Lesnar. Um, you know, you have the you have this person already that's kind of like a Paul Heyman to him, but they're going the more, you know, um character route with you know, whatever this is, which I still don't kind of get what he is. Like I don't get it either. Like fault like are y'all demons? Do y'all who are you like are you praisings? Like I don't I don't I don't know what the character is supposed to be or what yeah, she's I supposed felt like, to be. I felt like he's supposed to be similar to what Alistair Black was, I guess. 
Like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, it's because it's like, are you dark? You're darkness, though, but like, you, but not. Not? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't, yeah, it's like, I don't, I don't, and then, you know, you're coming out with like the, the, the Roman gear and stuff now, but like, you got like a, a pinstripe suit and then you shooting stuff in black and white with a, with a, with a, a muscle car. I'm like, what, yo, what, what, what era are you in? What are you doing? Like, what, what decade like are you in? The- there's the whole clock thing. I was like, well, that was Boogeyman. I already had that. Yeah. <laughs> Boogeyman. TikTok. I'm like, yo, that's that's everybody's thing. Yes, that's so everybody. I, yeah. So I don't know. So my, my whole thing is I I I I'm not too like I, again, I don't get the whole thing behind carrying across and I I, I Ooh, excuse me. No problem. Oh man, that was me thinking about Karen's career. Shit. Um, oh, come on. So, yo, just how yo. like Adam. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just, wow. just, just like Adam Cole though, like he called it out too. Like, yo, they gotta do all of these bells and whistles to make you feel special. Yeah. Only way you gotta make Adam Cole feel special? Ring the bell. Old AF. All right. And it's the truth, though. And it's going to always for me. Be yep. Adam Cole, baby. Baby. <laughs> Let them know. That, if you want to ask me, who is Mr. NXT? Adam, Adam Cole. Oh. Baby. Baby. Undisputed. Yep. No pun intended. But yeah, so um, but but speak but speaking of people who are definitely undisputed, it has been very undisputed that uh someone we care about very much is, is getting treated unfairly in this piece, and uh it's getting red hot in here. It's getting red hot. It's red, please. It's red because it's the red. raw recap. We on the raw recap, and we are on the underdog of the day, which is Naomi. This is Fear the Glow 2. This past Monday night on uh, Raw, Naomi was in a match, um, and we thought it was about to be a match with, uh, and we were, a little, we were a little scared because Naomi was about to face the best in the world. The best. The best in the listen, world. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> Y'all don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Eva Marie is back. Listen. <laughs> She's back. It's all red. Oh, everything. everything. Okay. Back, guys. Eva Marie We're um, saved. made her saving debut, if you would call it, on Raw <laughs> this uh, past <laughs> Monday. Um, and she uh, was supposed to go up against Naomi. Uh, actually did not, and she used a, who seems now to be, um, I guess, uh, 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 along the runs with her, a mysterious partner. Um, I, I forget, I, think, I, believe her, I believe her name is Amanda Grace from NXT uh, UK, um, is the one that decided to face Naomi in this match. And um, squash match. And for those that don't know what a squash match is, this is for um, a, either new talent or, some, or a talent that the company is trying to push to the ca- uh, the audience for us to want to get behind. So a person kind of, you know, like has to get their butt whipped. And this one was Naomi. And um, I don't know what Naomi has done or what has happened, but um, I'm going to be honest. Not, nah, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't nope. like it. Nope, 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 nope. I, uh... <laughs> Oh my goodness, for Trinity Fatu, this talented young lady who is still so young, like she's not over the hill in wrestling terms by any means at all. So young, in incredible shape, very over with the crowd, so marketable. I mean, every I, all of her outfits just scream merch sales. Like the fear, when, when she had her glow championship belt, that would have just sold in, I don't understand. How they have someone who can who is so over, who can do so much, and they do so little with, like just for them. I remember they're at a point not too like they love YouTube clips, they love the viral clips now, right? 
when she returned at Royal Rumble, her ovation, her reaction, used quickly on their WWE YouTube channel. This yeah. girl was on total on total divas for a good while. When I watched that show, because I watched it, because I'm a wrestler, I'm gonna watch it. Her storylines were the ones I was into, like her her road to recovery, yep. the dramas, the drama she had with meeting uh, Jim Jimmy, uh, J- uh, her her husband's uh, dad Rikishi, all that kind of stuff. The, you know, and I mean, and they kind of swept it on the rug a little bit though. But it seemed like Rikishi wasn't feeling him getting married at all, you know. But that was something they kind of moved on. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I, yeah, but I enjoyed seeing all of that on there. I enjoyed seeing her. I love seeing her in the ring. She's a good athlete. She can go. And yet they, they just fed her to this. Like, they have so many jobbers on their roster. You could have pulled a local talent from Orlando to do this. Like you used done to. That. Like you used to. Yeah, yeah, I used to. We're the CWC folks that don't mind yeah. coming in here and taking some, taking some hits. Like, like why, why, is it, like, why is it Naomi? You could have called any girl from the Mae Young Classic. Like, why Naomi? Like, you, they're like, that's all like, Naomi is a former women's champion. They can say, she just pinned a women's champion, a foreign women's champion. No, no, she shouldn't have done that. Should've it should have been some random squash because it, it had nothing to do with Naomi. She shouldn't even been involved with this, whatever. If anything, that could have been a, a real rivalry that that uh, Eva could have had with someone who's good in the ring to help carry her through a match because I don't know how well Eva Marie's wrestling is these days. Still don't know. And yeah, which still don't know. Smart, which was not smart on their part. So it's like, oh, so she the debut and she still didn't get in the ring. Wow. And, this, and, this, and didn't they do this in any like sir? It's like when you came back all red, everything, wasn't it? Walk off, yeah, and walked away. What don't listen. It, look, that, that's why we're calling Naomi the underdog today of the day. If you checked out our last podcast, Jesus Naomi, Lord. if you're watching this, you already know we are in full support of you. You deserve way more. Um, just as much as I've said, just like with a coffee or anybody, you have earned the right to go. If I want to be put in a title picture, I should be able to go talk to somebody and be able to be put in the title picture. Another another ones um, that's also, you know, as we keep moving forward, going into the raw recap that I feel is getting the same type of lack of, of respect or anything goes to Asuka. Um, uh, once again, getting defeated by Rhea Ripley. I understand trying to build Rhea Ripley up, but it's like, yo, at what cost to someone else? You should have built her up at WrestleMania last year when you had her tap out to Charlotte. So it's always funny how the ones that got to tap out to Charlotte because y'all don't want her to lose at WrestleMania seem to not really seem to kind of hit that real backslide because even then too like um nikki cross defeated charlotte after charlotte dog walking her through most of the match yep and it's like for for what yep so then so that these two can go over so what I feel so it made me so sad because they have so many so much talent like and they have talent that they could have used that they just released you released Nikki James you released the Iconics you released all these people you let Kari Zane leave because you weren't doing anything with her like all these all these people who could have been something in the division they only could have turned heel, and I and I and I'm I'm working on a fancy booking video called Fear the Glow. Yes. Now I'll tell you as part of it, like a heel Naomi could have been somebody that could have gone against a, a very uh, a very great champion in Bianca Belair, who currently has no real rivalry going on right now. Okay, nope. who also like, has no they, competition. Like there's nobody on SmackDown Live right now for Bianca to go against, and that could have been a heel Naomi. Yeah, we already talked but about this. Yeah, but, it's, but instead they got her job into the person that the announce team is acting like they don't know. Like y'all don't know she's on NXT UK. As if y'all don't know. So, so yeah. Like, and, and that just is the toppling of the clusterfuck that was this week's Raw. 
So, of course, like not only that, like we said, uh, Nikki Cross defeated Charlotte Flair, but it was by count out after, you know, Rhea Ripley interfering. Also, like we said, Asuka uh, was defeated by uh, Rhea Ripley as well. And then um, more matches came that are just kind of like, you know, filled in stories that don't make sense. Jeff Hardy uh, lost to John Morrison. God, God beat Cedric Alexander and it's just like oh okay uh it's always glad on the line see, always glad to see Jeff on camera never never not gonna do that but just what he put his 20 plus career on the line on a random Monday night raw I'll leave this place forever okay be like, yo, you know Hell in a Cell is Sunday, right? Yeah, maybe that could have been something to build for that. You yeah, know, like, that's a like last time you was there, you 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 jumped off the top and went through a table. Yeah, and the, the and I think one of the last times you you could have done so so much with that man, like a loser league SmackDown because you could have done the highlights of the last time Hardy lost a loser league SmackDown match, and he legit left for years when against CM yeah. Punk. Yeah. And now, and that I felt that was rivalry of the year to me. Like CM Punk and Jeff Hardy, that one, that one was so underrated. Yeah, that was up there so, with uh, and nobody want to be saying this. That was up there with uh, Matt and Edge, as yeah. far as like Hardys and them were concerned. That was outside yeah. of the aspect of what happened between Matt and Edge in real life. That was yeah. up there. Them them two went at it, at it, like it's, for real. Yeah. Like them them shots look stiff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very <laughs> stiff, very real. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. So you got you got now these things going on with just displacement between like three three of these great wrestlers and stuff like that. Same thing going on with like Jackson Ryder and Elias. Um, none, none of these people really won by pinning anyone this Monday. Like everybody won by either disqualification or count out. Screwy finish. Screw all That's of them. Were, yeah, it was a majority of screwy finishes, except of course for RK Bro versus the New Day again. Yeah, um, again, again, oh. and then the the probably top matches that you would want to build, I guess, would be Alexa Bliss defeating Nia Jax by yep. disqualification. Yep. Um, not really sure what's going on there. And then the two event, the event then leading to the main event, which was Drew McIntyre defeating AJ Styles by disqualification to, to lead to Drew and the Viking Raiders taking on Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and uh, 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 Amos which the Viking Raiders will be getting a tag team title shot soon. And the highlight from it was Drew has finally, after months and months, pinned Bobby Lashley. So now there has to be a chance that he's going to do it at Hell in a Cell. Right, Tina Dude? Right? Um, listen. Because he pinned, he pinned Bobby Lashley on the Raw before Hell in a Cell. So hey. he got to do it, right? And, and 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 he stood and he stood tall to end the show. I e mean the camera just focused on him as credits rolled. That definitely means he has to win it because we've been cheering for him to win it this whole time. Right. We've loved his booking. We've enjoyed him. He's been a babyface this whole time, even though he lost clean at WrestleMania, which is supposed to be the season finale of all the storylines. Again, listen. I really, really, and I and it's nothing against Drew McIntyre. I don't want him anywhere near the WWE side of the championship picture for a while now because of how they, and it's not because of him, but because of how they booked him. Right. I don't want him near it for a while. Mm-hmm. I want Bobby Lashley to win and retain. Hey, maybe, 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 maybe by a Kofi heel turn interference or something like that. Maybe, maybe the New Day joins Bobby Lashley and becomes the new Hurt Business. Maybe something like that. Oh, or, or whatever. Or, or here's a great one. Why don't you just let Bobby whoop his ass like it's normally going and give him someone else to fight? Hey, wait a minute. Where's the thing at? Where's the thing? Hold on. Wait a minute. I think we got to. I think we got to. I think winner, winner, chicken dinner is the term for today in that. Um, how about nope. you just let him do that? Um, Hold him out. And then give him Brock Lesnar if he's gonna come. What are we waiting I, on? I am a okay with that. Don't need a triple threat match. Don't need, don't need that. Don't need any of that. 
I don't want any of that. This whole time, we're waiting for that. And I feel after Hell in a Cell, you got what, Money in the Bank? Have Brock Lesnar show up at Money in the Bank. Oh, I would love for Boombox uh, Brock to come back. Listen, exactly. Just do it. I don't know. I'm like, yo, yeah. that, hey, hey, yeah. bro. I'll fuck with you for that. Yeah. That's fine. Yes, it was. It was dope. And I was like, okay. Right now, you guys don't have anybody in position that can even win that briefcase that I take seriously anyway right now. So no. go ahead and give it to Brock. Build up Brock and Bobby for SummerSlam. You got Roman and John Cena on the other card. This is going to be a huge mark. You think, you think John will pull it for SummerSlam? I think he is. For that bet, they're going to give him – they're going to give Cena back because on the real, Cena's doing movies and all that, though. But, like, pandemic's still going on. Movies are not, like, getting filmed at the rapid rate that they were before. They're still getting mm-hmm. filmed. Yeah, but Cena got time. He got time. Rock, I think Rock may have time too for Mania. Oh, Brock, that, Brock, Brock just wait for people to come back. That was that was yeah. That was. Brock was like, got time. I gotta, I gotta be here. Take this belt. I'll be back. <laughs> like, and, and Brock, yeah, and Brock is on. I think, is it a million dollars a pay per view? Yeah, but he's but like, but like Heyman said, Brock is. And if Kenny Omega would have understood that, he probably could be doing the same thing. He was like, "Yo, Brock is a spectacle." Yeah. If you saw him it's, every day, the lure would be gone. Let me tell you something. If if Kenny Omega don't get a stylist, bro, and get out of here with this bull, and get up out of here. I'm just like, bro, you know, like we're not in the '80s of wrestling anymore. And 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 I and I don't mean any offense to any people in any other country. Maybe this is the style in Japan right now, or in another country, maybe. I but you're nobody. the champion. Yeah, I don't. I ain't seen nobody dressed like that in any countries. Because one fan was like, "This is not just Japan." I don't think so. I don't I think know, so. I, know, I, know, I don't. Like, I don't think Japan was Japan, a part of that. Yeah, not Japan, not Canada. I don't know where they dress like this at. I don't know. You know, you said the eighties, but I want you to dress like a real champion, bro. I want you to look legit. Could you imagine? Could you imagine Brock Lesnar coming out dressed like that as UFC champion? I laugh. <laughs> Can I, you imagine that? I can't. That's why I'm laughing. I, I, I can't I imagine can't. it. I cannot imagine that. So that's why it's just like, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's no reason to. It's no reason to. Just yeah. like, you know, like, like it was no reason to really have a a, a, a Raw this week. Um, but because Hell in a Cell is happening, and, you know, it's a weekly prom, 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 ah, yeah. show, you got to do it. But you know what? Yeah. As we said, that show ain't happening over there. Good old SmackDown. Listen. Forgive me, y'all. I didn't. I didn't eat breakfast tomorrow, y'all. I'm, hey, I'm, man, I'm, look. I'm, this is the podcast for us by us. They know. First of all, they know both of us are two hardworking individuals, so mm-hmm. they know a lot of our stuff crosses over. So hey, we, yeah, we'll keep it real here. I apologize, guys, though, because I got up at four. I was working and all that, though. Forgot to grab breakfast. I did. I worked out. Now I'm starving. I got. I'm trying to sneak the food in. But like you said, it's just, it's just Omega. Like I, I don't mean, I don't mean the dog this guy. I don't mean dog him out though, but. It's like if, if he was on SmackDown Live, I would be like, guys, please send him back down to NXT. Oh yeah, For but like, you got you got back. NXT vibe. Yeah, I, I would I, I would say that though. But with SmackDown Live right now, this the that's the best show in wrestling right now. Yes, to me. Yeah, it's the best. It's, it's it's the best show. Yeah, Roman Reigns is the. And, he, and he, what's so funny about it is though too, it's it's doing what it can with what it has and that's what makes yes. it work so well like you have a yeah. great main oh excuse me oh my fault i started thinking about uh baron corbin's career and i just got oh! you know, all of a sudden, damn shit man sorry, poor king baron corbin. that boy sorry king corbin yeah. uh but he, but he, but he, you he, he, it would have been a king, a constable, and a baron. Isn't that crazy? And still can't get a championship match. Nope. Nope. But I'm glad to see him and Shinsuke, though. Uh, what You know what I do like about SmackDown? I will say that for, for Shinsuke, for uh, Baron, and for like uh, Liv Morgan and for Carmella, I think SmackDown is doing a very wonderful job of taking what they have and allowing these people to not only develop as characters, but for us to see these matches. Like, it's so yeah. great because, like, uh, for instance, like, to see, like, we'll start with, like, Liv Morgan and Carmelo, to see they're going back and forth. But now that they're going back and forth, I love the dynamic of the matches. The matches are good. It doesn't mm-hmm. need a storyline. Like, it doesn't need no, oh, I want to be, the, like, no. 
Both of us are here. We both want to try to make our dreams come true. We're trying to climb the ladder. And this is what's happening. It seems we're in a little series. So we're going to try to see who comes out on top. So all we got to do is keep showing up one another in this yeah. ring. And I love to see that. And now it's the same thing even with Baron Corbin and even trying to get them in the promotional side with like the Old Spice guy. But it's great yeah. to see like him and Shinsuke, two very eclectic type of wrestlers, one in the big man realm and one in the strong style realm, get that yeah. type of match each and every um, a week and they're delivering on it. Because it's like, yo, and then too, like what happens next? You do kind of have two kings going at it. So do they start getting more stuff? Like what's going to happen? So it, it's dope to see that, like you said, along with Roman and then um, uh, something I want to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. Montez Ford in single action this past Friday against mm-hmm. Chad Gable. Mm-hmm. And boy, let me tell you, man, tell, tell me how man wasn't out there shining bright like he couldn't have a championship on. Let me tell y'all something, all right? We said this before when the, I think the first episode, y'all. When, not if. And I'm not saying I like the Street Profits, but you always know that they're going to break up tag team. That's just part of the game. They broke up the New Day, okay? Undisputed Air broke up. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, anything's up for game. DX broke up. NWO broke up. So when the Street Profits break up, Montez Ford is going to be a star. Like, I'm not saying Angelo Dawkins can't still be on roster and do great things, but Mm -hmm. when I see Montez Ford, I see world champion. I do. I see world champion on him. I do. The promo skills, the frog splash. The frog splash. Oh good the, man. The height, bro. Like just your your athletic ability. And again, too, this is no shade toward Angelo Dawkins. It's just again, yeah. there's always gonna be somebody that's ahead of the race and a little bit forward than uh, than, than yeah. other people. Yeah. And so many like, yeah, yeah, many fantasy booking. I really see like imagine they have Montez Ford, Wing King of the Ring, become King Tez. That's how he turns heel. King Tez. I yeah. see something like I want him to like because I could like I said like nothing against Angelo Dawkins although but like Montez Ford and then like we know his wife is Bianca Belair too that's a that's a power couple champions championship power couple right there and they're both just great Dawkins with Dawkins with better mic skills can still do great things too though oh yeah 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 and, I, and then again that, that just takes a little bit more time a little bit more effort too yeah. and stuff like that if they did decide to do that but like we said we, we won't you know um there are still the street profits and stuff like that but it just shows to yeah. them both having the potential to do great things and it was just good to see like montez forward like what we said just everything we're agree, uh, saying on about him is dope and so um yep. still you know still on, on smackdown uh before we are we do get into our fantasy booking um you know kevin owens and biggie uh that defeated Sami Zayn and apollo cruz still all of that uh you know intercontinental t- uh, championship title contingency so i'm definitely most likely we're going to see a fatal four-way for the championship yep. at hell in the cell and then um you know cesaro coming back interrupting uh the promo between bianca belair and um I was about to say Becky Lynch. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Bailey, and then also seeing the return of Cesaro with uh, against Seth. So it'll probably be good to see like a match between them and Hell in the Cell. And then uh, you know Roman Reigns still being Thanos out here on SmackDown, beefing up yep. now this match between him and the King of the Luchadors. Yes, the Luchador King. Chief. Yeah, versus the Tribal Chief. Yep. The greatest say, mask in the game. Oh, the great oh. some will say some will say the greatest mask of all time. And I would not disagree with that. And I and if anybody got an argument for it, bring it because I can shut yeah. it all down. And but, I know I, I know I, I know so many people, so many love El Santo, but like I grew up I grew up on Ray Mysterio Jr. Like I grew up on him. Yeah. And to me, to me, he is the greatest luchador. Uh, the of greatest mask I've, 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 I've that I've ever seen. He to him, him. So so yeah, that's all yeah. I yeah. I think and, and I'm excited about this. Mysterio and Reigns Hell in the Cell. I know Reigns is gonna retain. I know it though, but I know it's gonna be a great story. I know, like, and you're incorporating two wrestling families. Like, this is good. This is good. You got a chance to elevate Dominic some more. Yep. Jimmy and Jay is in the mix. The pro the promo he cut backstage, and I felt like it was so good because not every great promo needs to be in the ring. You can have great moments backstage with the camera, and that's what they had, like, between the three of them. And, like, it felt like I was watching The Rock talk. Yeah. When Roman Reigns was playing the mind games on Jimmy, 
I was like, I'm looking at The Rock, the way he was saying things, his mannerisms. He was like, I don't want to fight you, Jay. Like, even though you know Roman wants to tear his head off, you know yeah. it. Fight you. I don't fight you. I don't fight you, Jimmy. You're my family. Why would you want to do like? Why would you do it? He kept like. Come on, bro. Like, that's what, like, like you said, man. That's why SmackDown <laughs> is where the real talent plays. Yeah. Because of that, and that's where the money is going. And all of them are going to be leading to uh, what's now about to, of course, be our fantasy booking before we get uh, uh, coming to the end of this podcast, which is, of course, Hell in the Cell is this upcoming Sunday. Um, uh, not all matches have been announced. We most likely will start getting the rest of the lineup uh this week, as you know, this podcast normally comes out on Thursday, so most matches will probably be announced on the Raw that is um, going to be showing before this one comes out. But what we want to do is a fantasy booking, but not for the entire show. We're not trying to do that. We just have one in particular match that we would like to see both on Raw and SmackDown. And so we're going to kind of do a little bit of who we would like to see in the men's division and the women's division. Armageddon six man slash woman hell in a cell match for the title. We got WWE Championship Universal. We got the women's title. What hell in a cell match would you like to see at hell in a cell? Six man Armageddon. Who are the champions in this match? Now. For me, when you said this off air too, when 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 you told me six man Armageddon, I immediately thought of the match I know we all thought about: Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H, Kurt Angle, Rikishi, Undertaker. That, because all those were the top stars. Yes. That was the very best, and you felt like the way they were all interacting with each other, it had to end in there, and that's what made like Hell in a Cell so special because we felt like. That's where it all had to end. Everything built up so much, it had to end in there. And that's yes. what made it special. And yep. for this one, they don't have enough talent across each brand for a Raw, Hell in a Cell, and a SmackDown. So this is going to be between both brands. I need both brands in here. And for me, and I need it to be, of course, Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles. I want Daniel Bryan. If I can pull him, can I pull him in there? Yeah, he, I mean, you know, technically, he, he's, we don't know if he's there, well, not yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, technically, yeah. AJ Styles. And that last one, though, the last one is a special one because I want, because it's it's already loaded with, with five top, the top guys. Yeah. That last one, that last spot, because I want it to be special. The last spot goes to the person who can, who can last in the gauntlet. And that person will either be Kofi Kingston or Seth Rollins. Yeah. One of those. One of those wins the gauntlet and then they go in and win it. That's mine. Okay. And mine is and mine is Roman is in there, Lash is in there, it's winner take all. There is okay. no more East Brand. When one guy will walk out with both belts for this one. I, right? I love that's, it. That's how that goes. For the women, we got uh Bianca Belair. I want Charlotte in there. I want Oscar. I want Rhea Ripley. Um the thing is for me, and uh, I would love to put Ronda Rousey in there and and uh, and uh, Sasha Banks, but I know Sasha's from a Mandalorian. Ronda Rousey, no, 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 this is this is your fantasy book. Fantasy. Okay, something, okay, cool. Cool. something could happen to where, like, yo, all of it went down, yeah. paperwork taken care yeah. of. Here, cue to me, okay, cool, cool. Ronda Rousey, Sasha Banks, all right, that one. It ends up getting it ends up getting crashed though because and this is again fantasy booking because yes. the way it was going toward the end of her run, she wasn't really getting the cheer she was getting at the beginning. We have Becky Lynch come in. She pulls out the briefcase she gave to Oscar. Low red herring. I told you guys that that was for the Raw Women's Championship. She handed me that. Well, you guys didn't realize that I walked away with the briefcase. Asa got the belt, but I got the briefcase. And today. I never and I never said there wasn't a contract. Yeah. I never said never that. said that. And I'm and I'm tick talking yeah. on about a year now. Oh, let's go ahead and cash this in. Boom. 
That'd be hard. That'd be okay. I give y'all, sir. I will give yo. The man, the man is back. The right where I back. belong. The man is back. <laughs> yes. I give, okay. I give you that. Again, those winner take all. Yep. Two belt banks is back. I mean, two belt Becky two belts is back. Yes, Becky oh. two belts is back. Okay. Oh, they those are those are phenomenal. Those are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mine. I, bro, I'll be honest, man. I'm uh, my fancy booking is a little different, bro. I want to see the NXT women's title competed in Hell in a Cell. Oh man, that'd be Amber good. Moon, yes, Kel Gonzalez, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, uh, um, Tori Storm, and mm. then coming from across the pond. Kaylee Ray. Oh. And hell in a set, bruh. I want Amber Moon to hit an eclipse on Tony Storm, though. Yes. I got to see that, though. Yes. Because Tony, so Tony will sell that like she like she got shot. Yes. Okay, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, yo. Shout out to Tony Storm selling points, bro. Yo, she almost up there with The Rock, bro. She be selling them hits. I love it. She be okay, like, oh. Like, like, are you okay? Like, <laughs> like I think her neck's broken. Yes. They're like, oh no, wait, she's up. Yes, she's up. Yeah, so yes. that's mine for the women. Oh, that's good. that. That is mine for the women. Um, another one I would want to see is for the NXT Championship, Hell in a Cell. Um, since we got to keep it current, but I want to see Karrion Cross, Adam Cole. Pete Dunn, Johnny Gargano, Ricochet, Ooh. and Finn Balor. And you, and, you know, and you know, Ricochet never held in, in, in NXT championship, had, did he? No, no, he held the uh, NXT uh, US one. The, uh, North American, but, uh, but uh, he, uh, he, he had never held the, uh, the, the NXT championship, huh? No, 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 he didn't. He didn't. No, he's never held that one. How did that happen? Cause he got bumped up. Cause that was during the time that's where Adam Cole was really like, sh- like sparking oh, yeah. up, and then that's when that prophecy yeah. thing started happening. Yeah, undisputed. Yeah, that was a man. That was a rough time. That was like being Randy Savage during Hulkamania, man. Yeah, like being yeah. Uh, being Hot Rod. Right, man, and so that's, that's why they moved him up. That's why they let him have the U.S. Championship belt because it was like, yeah. um, it was it was because of that. Like Adam Cole, undisputed started like wreck running shop on everything like it was all undisputed everything so that's my that's my mm-hmm. that's my hell in the cell matches i want to see like i mean i that's love cold. what nxt is doing i would love to see what they would do six people oh and the change and to change it up elimination hell in a cell oh my god bro. not no one oh winner bs an elimination hell in the cell Yo, you, know you gotta it, fight till the end. Yeah, bro. And for a pay per view, you got those. Those. Those have, those have to be the only two matches on that card. Those are the yeah. only two matches on that card. Yeah, like just give Man, us all, all four hell of the cells we did. Just give us that and let that be three hours. Yes, that's it. Because at the rate that they have to do it to really make it good, they it's gonna need to fail the whole show. That multiple eliminations because it's gonna be good. Oh my god, it's gonna be bro. so good, bro. And so it's like they have all these people on their roster right now. They have all these people right now. Yes. Nope. No, nope. we don't. Hey, AJ Styles versus Jackson Riker again and Elias. That's what yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what that's 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 what I really want to see. Now, now, if I'm being honest though, there was just one like you know how they always go like uh, what, what's what's the term they use? Uh, 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 honorable mention for for yeah, yeah. booking. I love to see. Listen, I, I I would love to see the Gauntlet match versus the best in the world. <laughs> Cause you know, listen, listen. You have to know, bro. That they don't know. If they don't know, bro. They don't know. Red everything. Everything, y'all. I need y'all to have see, to understand. Need to see her in the Hell in the Cell gauntlet match for the Raw and SmackDown <laughs> Women's Championship. Listen, that's what we need. That's what the we need. The rings will go through the roof. I'm telling y'all. I'm look. We letting y'all know. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> If she, if that happens, we're good. Oh, we're good. AEW ima- should stop working. Cut it off. Like, Im- imagine being Ruby Riot, Zelina Vega, Mickey James, 
the Iconics, Sarah Logan. Imagine being these people getting released and the... And that's what's going through, bro. John Laurinaitis comes back and then Eva Marie's back. Like, I'm going to be real. I don't want the Diva era to come back. I don't. I'm not happy about, like, if they use it for storyline purposes, but, I mean, I don't know. It, I, it's, I, it's it's all just really just depending on how you, how you how, like you said before, though, like how you go about it. Like, if you decide to make the split between Divas and WWE, like, women superstars, like, those, it's yeah. like, yo, like, I don't, and, and again, too, there's a good thing to be behind it. Like we said, like, you have folks that's like Carmella and stuff like that, that's like, she could run that that whole lane like that. And it's just like, yo, the show, like, yo, like, yo, there is a side of that we we like to do and that we want to show here. Like, yeah, I like to be brought in with the champagne, all of that stuff, and then still come in here and kick your ass. And so it's just yeah. like to see that split between all of them, that would be dope. But, you know, uh, I mean, as we've always said, anything is way better than the, the women's ooh. tag team champion run yeah, you're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. if I could just a little, a little mini, mini fancy booking real quick, too. Like, imagine Eva Marie, kind of like I said before, she comes back brings back the Divas Championship, slowly builds her stable. She poisons everybody, pulls in Carmella, pulls in uh, Mandy Rose and uh, and Dana Brooke, pulls in all these other people, whatever, you know, brings back the Bellas for a bit. You know, you come in all the leading nights because all the women, and, and literally it goes down from Raw, SmackDown, and even NXT. People are just split on there too. It all boils down to Evolution Civil War. Well, they already said um, that they They're will never going to do one. Yeah. But yeah. what you just said for that, though, actually led to what I thought as you were talking about this, yeah. a civil war at Survivor Series. Oh, that's that's even better, bro. Put it at Survivor Series, bro. Survivor and like, make Series. It, the and Divas like, versus the yeah. Superstars? And like, bro, and like, you could, and then like, it's so much background tool because there was a whole Diva era. Yeah, Lee Torres, Kelly yeah. Kelly, uh, Don Marie, Candace all of Michelle. them can make appearances, like, even from the yes. women's decade. Jazz, yes. Candace Michelle, all yes. of them, Ivory, uh, Jackie, Jack, all Jackie. of them, yeah, can come back and go, like, Yo, no, I know how it is to represent that women's championships. Trish, Trish, before yes. like a leader, all of them are on that women's yes. side, but like you said, there's that diva side too. Oh, bro. You know, come in and shut all that shit down. Oh, man, that uh, just a little fantasy booking myself. Let's say they down to one champion stuff again. And I know this, 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 this is, this, to me, this is dope. So the champion, uh, they take her out before the match. So the, the champion of the superstars can't do it and can't be the captain for the Survivor Series. All of a sudden, here come AJ Lee. Fam, fam. If they get AJ Lee back as the captain, erupt, bro. bro, that place will erupt. That place will lose its fucking mind. When her music hits, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> it's gonna be worse than I'm telling it's gonna be up there with Edge. It's gonna be up there with Edge at WrestleMania at Royal Rumble in Houston. Ooh, if you let if you let AJ do the slow walk out, she does a slow walk, she just stares, looks around like that boy. Ooh. And then skips down yeah. like it ain't like she ain't left. Yeah. Dog. AJ, AJ held it down, bro. She was the be- like, oh my God. Oh, if they can oh, get her to come back, man. Bro, all we saying is WWE, we're open for booking, man. We're open Call for us, booking. Man. But uh, oh, that has been another episode of K Fabe. So we want to thank y'all for checking this out. Let us know in the comments, like like Tuna Do said earlier. We love hearing y'all in the comments uh, all the time talking about this. We're glad that y'all are enjoying the show. We're gonna keep this going. Um, hope uh, you know we're gonna be trying to move to all deaf sports as soon as they got that vertical going. So definitely look out for that. We're gonna keep building this thing, man. This ain't gonna be no three episodes. And it's like, oh yeah, man, we're gonna try to get this stuff. No, you're looking at two nope. people that love wrestling. And I'm be honest with you don't like making stuff and it don't come out especially working with this man i'm just gonna be oh, yeah. honest like even even, <laughs> even having to drop the stuff late uh for this last week i felt terrible i'm like yo never want to waste a man trying to do his time because it is well respected yeah, so i was like, like bro it's all good because because y'all know y'all know we'll work we'll listen we will very we're very busy guys all right we work a lot a lot of content going on whatever i was like bro it's all good and things i tell people and this this isn't me being cocky we make good content, and even if it comes out late, you 
if, if you like it, you're going to wait for it. You're going to watch it. I Listen, and it's worth the wait, okay? Yes, indeed. Kay Fabe, Kay Fabe is here, y'all. I want to honor to be a part of this, man. And y'all, listen, we are going to be one of your top wrestling channels like this time next year. All right, mark this mark this day. This yep. time next year, we're going to be one of the top. Like, I remember when he said that. Yep. 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 So you already heard it here first. So just know. So like again, thank you for checking out Kayfabe. Uh, make sure you follow myself. Make sure you follow Chenadu. Support, support, support. As you can see, expected delay delays is always around in the Texas area, in the southern area. Yes. Going to be coming even more. So always stay looking at Chenadu's page yes. to know where he going to be laying down the funny. And as always, you can check me out on everything with all Def RK tokens and myself. So as always, we will catch you next time. Kayfabe. Hey, hey.